Road 14, and I got a crossroad. Uh, I went a couple of crossroads out there, and I saw a big, big deer, and I saw a uh, big cock pheasant. And then I went over to Bluff Park. There was a whole bunch of these seeds laying by the side of the road. So that's corn seeds. Hot. The green stuff is like corn poison. It's, uh, it's a fungicide. Helps the seed from keep getting rotten in the ground. Right. You know, I planted some corn this year, but uh, in my tiny front yard, so I might have to call it in the It's on. What? It's for live with seven people oh. watching. Oh. So it's just you. Here, let me see your You have a blue light on there, Janet? No, there. it's on. Okay. I didn't hold the button long enough, I guess. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see you. Welcome to worship. Uh, today is Pentecost, and I see some red out there, even red chairs. Woohoo! <laughs> so it's great to have you with us. And um, for those of you at home joining us online, we just want to invite you to gather some communion elements, we will be celebrating communion during this worship service, so take just a moment and gather some bread and wine, or cracker and juice, or whatever, coffee and donuts, whatever will work for you for communion. Um, today is our last day of Sunday school, so we at the later service will be thanking all our Sunday school teachers, but I just wanted to let you know that it has been a long year, and a good year, and we appreciate um, all of the adaptations and moving in and out of Sunday school with uh, this whole COVID thing we've been had going on. So we are celebrating a completion of Sunday school today. Um, we also, today's a big Sunday. We have a lot going on. Um, we have a baptism for Nora Landgraf at the second at 10 o'clock. And we also have first communion for six more of our uh, youngsters, young adults. <laughs> And then at one o'clock today is the affirmation of baptism for, for many students. Um, I think there's 11 students who are part of that this afternoon. And hopefully the weather will continue to just hold without the wind. That would be just lovely for all of us today for all of these things going on. Tonight at 6.30 at Washington Park, uh, there will be a prayer vigil uh, that um, a lot of the faith leaders in the community have been putting together. Um, it's just a brief little prayer vigil for racial equality and justice. And so I just want to bring your attention to that. If you'd like to, to come for that, that would be wonderful to have your presence there. 
Um, this is a long list of announcements, sorry. <laughs> Bear with me. Um, Wednesday night this week at 6 o'clock, all middle school ministry students are welcome, and their families are welcome to come. Uh, it will be my last chance to play with you. And so uh, it would be great to have you with us. Um, I think it's just going to be a, a fun night to hang out and be together. And then also Wednesday night at 6.30, the church council will be meeting. Uh, we had to reschedule the meeting from, I think it was Mother's Day originally. I'm not sure. But anyway, so much going on that council is, is coming Wednesday at 6.30. Next week will be my last Sunday as your intern pastor here. And so uh, it's also the fifth Sunday of the month. And so we're going to have one worship service at 10 a.m. It's Mankato, uh, Messiah Worships United. And uh, my understanding is that there will also be some sort of a presentation and then a lunch. So we'll be eating together. So make plans to come and hang out uh, after that worship service. It would be it would be fun to see everybody. I think a couple of my kids are coming, not all of them, but maybe two out of three. That's not too bad. <laughs> also, just so you know, um, you are always welcome to wear a mask. And if you need us to mask for your safety, please let us know. We're going to um, just assume that when we're outdoors, it's safe. But if for some reason we need to move inside, we would ask you to wear your mask just out of consideration for people who ha cannot be immunized. Um, and finally, this is the last announcement. <laughs> um, Jesse Fox's uncle passed away this week. And so we send our sympathy to Jesse uh, at the death of his uncle. We'll keep him in our prayers as well. Any other announcements? That was a long list, but if you've got any. <laughs> okay. Well, let us begin then uh, with the confession and forgiveness. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who looks upon us in compassion, forgives our sins, and heals our lives. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Have mercy, O God. Against you alone we have sinned. In your, in your compassion, cleanse us from our sin and take away our guilt. Create in us a new heart and give us a steadfast spirit. Do not cast us away, but fill us with your Holy Spirit and restore your joy within us. Amen. As tender as parent to child, so deep is God's compassion for you. As high as heaven is above the earth, so vast is God's love for you. As far as east is from west, so far God removes your sin from you, renewing your life through Jesus Christ. Blessed be God who crowns us with mercy and love. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. Amen. Amen. And we continue a song.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with you. you. And we continue with the Kyrie. where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, 
they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declared, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old, young, old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That was a good job with all of those <laughs> words and names. I think it's because you're a scientist, too. You know how to speak another language already. Latin. Latin. <laughs> um, I invite you to stand if you're able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus said, when the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me, yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I'm going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. I want to invite the kids who are here to come up for just a minute. Yep, you can come on up here if you want or whatever works for you guys. Little kids and, and a little bit bigger kids. Okay, ultimate. Um, so do you guys, you guys all know how to play telephone, right? Yeah, and so you start with one person and then you stand up. And was it a good movie? Huh. There's no other way. It sounds like it, well, you enjoyed that movie. Yeah. All right. Well, and some of you, and Malia, I think you have. You remember playing telephone Pictionary? Have you done that with me? Yeah. For those of you don't know, don't know how to do that, if you have a circle of people, and you just take scrap piece of paper. It's like if you have six people, six scraps of paper, and then you start out. Somebody does a sentence, right? And then you draw a picture. So I'm going to show you how it looks. I had a bunch of people do this for me this week because I knew we wouldn't have time to do it ourselves, and I didn't want us to just play telephone. But I want us to remember that sometimes when we start to hear something, it comes out funny the other way. And we're gonna, I'm going to talk about that more in the sermon about how sometimes we, we hear something and we don't always 
but don't always understand it the way we should. And so we do all sorts of funny things with it. But the Holy Spirit always helps us hear things the way we should. But for the people who helped me play Telephone Pictionary the other day, the Holy Spirit wasn't helping them. Because here's what happened. I wrote a sentence, and, and, the, and the sentence says, the little girl did a belly flop in the swimming pool, okay? So then I had somebody draw me a picture. Yep, there you go, belly flop in the swimming pool, right? So then somebody looked at that picture, and I said, now write a sentence. And this is what they wrote. Walking on water. Mm -hmm. So then somebody else saw that, and this is what they drew. It's like a puddle, right? Yeah. So then the person, the person who saw this picture wrote this. The Lord be with you. <laughs> yep, yep. And then the person who wrote that or read that drew. This was my artist of the day. This is Dale Kinney, right? So that's what he drew. And the person who saw that wrote a holy man, maybe Jesus is praying for a child by laying his hand on his head. Okay, and then I had one more picture. Remember where we started now, right? And then the worship band helped me out with the last sentence. They looked at that picture and they said, it's a little boy on his knees getting a blessing. And at confirmation this afternoon, they're going to be singing a song called Little Ones on Their Knees. And so that was what was on their brain. So we went from a little girl is going to do a belly flop in a swimming pool to a little person kneeling and getting a blessing. That kind of got mixed up, didn't it? Yeah. And that's not just like a game. That's what happens with us a lot is we'll hear one thing, but it wasn't really what was said or what was intended, right? And it gets mixed up. And before you know it, we're thinking all sorts of things that are not what was intended. But today is Pentecost. And today we're talking all about the power of the Holy Spirit. And we just heard in the Gospel of John how Jesus says, I had to leave. I'm leaving because the Spirit has to come and the Spirit is going to make everything right. The Spirit will help us hear what we need to hear and be able to say what we need to say and will help us be able to do God's will in God's word in, in God's world right now so that's what we are going to remember today that thanks to the spirit when it comes to important stuff we can rely on the spirit to help us get the right message okay I got one more thing for you What are these? Bubbles. We have all sorts of images to tell us about the Holy Spirit because you can't see the Spirit, right? We know Jesus walked on earth as a human, so we have an understanding perhaps of, of what Jesus might have looked like at least when he was walking on the earth. But the Spirit isn't a person. It's not a girl or a boy. The Spirit is God, but it's God in a spirit form. And so we use all these images to talk about spirit. Sometimes it's fire, wind. You would know that normally when it's so windy up here, right? Still as can be this morning, but that's okay too. When the wind goes, we can't see the wind, but we can tell it's there, right? So same thing with the spirit. And bubbles too, as they float through the air, they're floating on the air currents. And so that too can remind us of the spirit so you are invited to take those bubbles back and you can feel free to blow bubbles for the rest of the service okay all right all right thanks for coming up i think if you can blow that many bubbles that would be awesome it's always fun having someone who's really comfortable with his grandma <laughs> So Daniel Kahneman is a psychologist, and he actually won the Nobel Prize for Economics, I'm not sure when, but in the last few years, uh, for his work applying psychological concepts to economic theory. And he was a guest recently on the On Being podcast that Krista Tippett does, and I love the title of their conversation. It was, Why We Contradict Ourselves and Confound Each Other. 
So Chip had started out the conversation, and she reminded the listeners that ever since the um, Enlightenment, we've always thought of ourselves as rational, logical people, right? We pride ourselves on being able to make decisions that make sense, we're logical, we can tell right from wrong, and, um, and uh, good from bad, and all those kinds of things. But Kahneman says, it just ain't so. He says, it's not true that rationality is really, uh, apologies to the mathematicians, just a mathematical concept. And that when it comes to humanity, it's impossible for us to be truly rational beings. We, it would just require of us to know and understand more than our brains have capacity for. And so as a result, he argues, we I often contradict ourselves. And we say things that are that are that don't go together, but yet we'll have conflicting beliefs. And that's why we also confound each other as well. He says there's two different kinds of thinking that our brains can do. And what we do most of the time is what they call the system one thinking. It's a fast, we take a lot of shortcuts, he says. It's kind of a fast, intuitive thinking. And what we think and do is based on what we've already known. And so uh, we build on our experience, right? And if you're like me, we have some quirky foundations that we start with as well. We already are told contradictions. We we put them into our being, and then we build on those. And then anytime we get new information, of course, we have to fit it in. We quickly need to fit it into what we already know. And so we'll we'll like twist it so that it makes sense, or we'll tell ourselves a story about it so that we can make it work. Now he says it's possible for us to be deeper, more analytical thinkers. We have that capacity, and he calls that system too, but he says the problem is that system is lazy. It requires a lot of work and time and energy to be very analytical and thoughtful and logical about what it is we believe and why it is we believe it, so that most of the time we just quick do that quick intuitive thinking and just let it go. Okay, there's lots more I could say about that. You can check out the podcast. He's got some books and those kinds of things. But I do have a reason why I've been telling all you, telling all of this to you this morning. I want you to think about that first story that we heard from Acts, the story about the coming of the Holy Spirit. What happens is that on that first Pentecost day, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit turns all of the words and the thinking and the hearts of the people who were present that day literally upside down when you stop and think about that. If not for the work of the Holy Spirit, those first days of the early Christian church, that first Pentecost would never have happened. We know, of course, that the apostles should not have been able to speak to other people in different languages, languages that were not the apostles' own language. But it happened. And of course it happened because of the power of the Holy Spirit. But just as important, I think, are the people who heard this, what scripture says was noise or sound. The people who heard something that didn't make sense to them and they came and listened. Just was just as important is the fact that they came and heard and had their minds changed. That would never have happened except for the power of the Holy Spirit. The scripture even tells us that if you read it very carefully. What we heard is that the people come and at first they're amazed. They're like, what is this? It's not what they were expecting. And then they're perplexed and it makes no sense at all. And then of course, what did they do? Because it doesn't make any sense, they make up a story. Oh, they were drinking. Mm -hmm. And so that's making those shortcuts in their minds. And that's trying to fit something in with what they already know. Now, normally, that's where a story would end, right? They would have gone away that day going, you should have heard about these crazy people who were speaking gibberish. And they, they were, who knows what they had been drinking or doing that day. But that's not where the story ends because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Peter's sermon actually changed hearts and minds that day. And it wasn't because Peter preached an amazing sermon. It was because the Holy Spirit at work. I better... Why not? 
It was, that's the Holy Spirit. No, I don't know. It was because the Holy Spirit was at work in them. Thanks to the power of the Holy Spirit, devout Jews who would have never accepted Peter's version of what was happening, never would have gone along with Peter's argument about what Jesus had done under any normal circumstances. That day they were able to hear the voice of God through the voice of other people, thanks to the power of the Holy Spirit. Here comes the wind. Here comes the spirit. I don't want us to underestimate the magnitude of what that event must have been like that day. It never should have happened, but it did because of the Holy Spirit. And at the same time, I don't want us to underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit still at work in our world today. In the podcast, if you happen to listen to it, you will hear Kahneman is quite discouraged about the opportunity or the possibility that we have to change one another's minds. But I beg to differ with him because as people of faith, we understand and trust in the power of not ourselves, but in the power of God and in the power of the Holy Spirit to change others and to change ourselves. It's very easy, I think, for all of us to be discouraged and to think we are never going to heal the divisions that exist in our world today, whether they are divisions in our social sphere, in our political system, and even the divisions that are rampant, really, in Christianity itself. But the Holy Spirit reminds us and teaches us and gives us hope for it to be something other than that. I love the story of Christian Piccolini as just one small example of what the Holy Spirit can do. The short version of his story is that Piccolini was a neo-Nazi, and he ended up developing meaningful relationships with the very people that he hated. And because they continued to show him love, after a while he could no longer hang on to his own hate-filled beliefs. You can find his story and others like his out on a website called Love After Hate. Again, that's the power of the Holy Spirit. That's not the work that you and I can do by ourselves, but it is the power of the Spirit that works in us. And indeed, the power of the Holy Spirit is at work, not just in those public stories, not just, I don't know. Oh, sure. They're louder. Yeah. You know, Ryan was uh, setting up an extra microphone before church this morning, and he said, it's always just in case, so good job, Ryan, for taking care of her. And Steve says it needs to be louder. So, and he's sitting in the front row. <laughs> we'll keep playing with it. In the meantime... <laughs> In the meantime, I have a loud voice, but we'll do this. Um, the Spirit is at work. And the Spirit is, is at work not just in that first Pentecost, not just in those public stories like the example that I gave you, but the Spirit is also at work. Maybe most importantly, the Spirit is, is at work in us. The Spirit is at work in you and in me so that all of us might truly hear the voice of God in our world today. Some of you have been brave enough to say that to me over the last several months. Some of you have told me, you have acknowledged that you have been struggling. You don't know 
you wonder about what it means and what it is you should exactly believe and say and do, whether it's been politics or the pandemic or racism or your very own faith or some other kind of hot topic. And I also know that there are many more who can't even yet say that out loud. But we are all, it is likely, have been and are struggling in one way or another about certain topics, wrestling and trying to figure it out. But as God said to me once, in the midst of a difficult struggle I was going through, a wrestling that I was doing, God said, the struggle is good. The struggle is good. To not know, to find yourself uncertain, is also to realize the Holy Spirit is busy working within you. To struggle with our own thinking and the thinking of others, to yearn to better understand one another, to want to hear the voice of God, all of that is the work of the Holy Spirit. And it is the hope that we have for a better world, for a world that one day can be healed and divisions will be no more. This work of the Spirit is the very best hope that we have. Perhaps it's the only hope that we have for our world today. Yay, it, that's the uh, Spirit. It must be the storm coming. I'm just teasing. <laughs> I want to close with a poem by Wendell Berry that I think talks about this hope as well. He wrote, it may be that when we no longer know what to do, we have come to our real work. And when we no longer know which way to go, we have begun our real journey. The mind that is not baffled is not employed. The impeded stream is the one that sings. Let us sing. Gracious God, you give the Holy Spirit to your church. 
filling it with many and varied gifts. In the church throughout the world, strengthen us in our visioning and dreaming that it may discover anew the Spirit's creative work. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of life, your mighty works are too numerous to count. The earth is full of your creatures, living things both great and small. Open your hand and give them the necessities of this life. Send your fresh spirit over the face of the earth. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. God of the nations, at the sound of the rushing wind, people speaking different languages proclaimed and heard together your deeds of power. Fill the leaders of nations with your Holy Spirit so that they exercise your gracious will in the lives of people. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. God of faithfulness, you tend to the needs of your people, even the size of our hearts. Hear those who cry out to you in distress. Comfort Jesse Fox as he grieves the death of his uncle. Restore to wholeness all who are in any need this day, especially Ben and Craig, Dave, Earl, Judy, Rosie, Ray, Diane, Margie, Tom, Jim, Helen, Dave, Pat, Cheech, Cindy, and those we now name out loud or in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of love, fill the congregation of Messiah with gratitude for the gifts we have received from you. Renew our ministries, heal our divisions, and open us to the needs of our neighbors. Today we lift up our young people, giving thanks for their gifts and presence among us. Thank you for naming and claiming Nora in the gift of holy baptism, for stirring a hunger for the gift of holy communion in Alex, Stanley, Bria, Nicholas, Taylor, and Colin, and for confirming the faith of Thora, Evelyn, Violet, Julian, Stephen, Siri, Caitlin, AJ, Ashley, Blake, and Olivia. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, Your mercy is great. great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. And I invite you to just take a moment to share God's peace with one another. With you. Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours and your faithfulness is sure. Word and water, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Receive the gifts we bring and nourish us to proclaim your abiding love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And as you peel back that first layer or eat a cracker at home, the body of Christ is given for you.
And as you peel back the other to get access to the liquid in your little cup, <laughs> remember that the blood of Christ is shed for you. Amen. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his peace. Amen. And let us pray. Living God, as the disciples ate and drank with their risen Lord, we have been nourished with the very presence of Christ. Through this meal, may we be strengthened to keep your word and to proclaim the power of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen and receive this blessing. God, the source of glory, God, the word of life, God, the spirit of truth, bless you all now and forever. Amen.